Hello, I'm Bishop Paul of the Reformed Old Catholic Church, Diocese of South Australia. Today is the third Sunday in Ordinary Time. And I'd like to share with you today some of the readings from today's Mass, starting with the Collect. Almighty and ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, consisting of men, women and children, old enough to understand. This was the first day of the seventh month on the square before the water gate, in the presence of men and women and children old enough to understand, he read from the book from early morning till noon, and all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden dais, erected for the purpose, in full view of all the people, since he stood higher than all the people, Ezra opened the book, and when he had opened it, all people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and, of, and all the people raised their hands and answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and, and faced to the ground, prostrated themselves before the Lord, and Ezra read from the law of God, translating it, and giving this sense so that people understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, his excellency, and Ezra, priest and scribe, and the Levites, who were instructing the people, said to all the people, This day is sacred to the Lord your God. Do not be mournful, do not weep, for the people were all in tears as they listened to the words of the law. He then said, Go, eat the fat, drink the sweet wine, and send a portion to the man who has nothing prepared ready, for this day is sacred to our Lord. Do not be sad, the joy of the Lord is your stronghold. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Just as a human body, though it is made up of many parts, is a single unit, because all these parts, though many, make one body, so it is with Christ. And in one spirit we were all baptized, Jews as well as Greeks, slaves as well as citizens, in one spirit was given to us all to drink. Nor is the body to be identified for any one of its many parts. If the foot were to say, I am not the hand, and so do not belong to the body, would that mean that it stopped being a part of the body? If the ear were to say, I am not an eye, so I do not belong to the body, would that mean that it, has, it, it was not the part of the body. If your whole body was just an eye, how would you hear anything? It was just one ear. How would you smell anything? Instead of that, God made all the separate parts into the body on purpose. If all the parts were the same, how could it be a body? As it is, the parts are many, but the body is one. The one eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you, nor can the head say to the feet, I do not need you. What is more, it is precisely the parts of the body that seem to be the weakest, which are indispensable ones. It is the least honourable parts of the body that we clothe with greatest care. So our more improper parts get decorated in a way that 
our more proper parts do not need. God has arranged the body so that more dignity is given to the parts which are without it, and that there may not be disagreement inside the body, but that each part may be equally concerned for all the others. If one part is hurt, all the parts are hurt with it. If one part is given special honour, all parts enjoy it. Now you together are Christ's body, but each of you is different part of it. In the church, God has given the first place to the apostles, second to the prophets, third to the teachers, and after them miracles, and after them the gifts of healing, helpers, good leaders, those with many languages. Are all of them apostles, or all of them prophets? Or all of them teachers? Do they all have the gift of miracles? Do all have the gift of healing? Do all speak strange languages? And all interpret them? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And today's gospel is from the gospel according to Saint Luke. Seeing that many others have undertaken to draw up the accounts of the events that have taken place among us, exactly as they were handed down to us by those who from the onset are, were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, I, in my turn, after carefully going over the whole story from the beginning, have decided to write an ordered account for you, Theophilus, so that your Excellency may learn how well founded the teaching that is, is that you have received. Jesus, with the power of the Spirit in him, returned to Galilee, and his reputation spread throughout the countryside. He taught in their synagogues, and every one praised him. He came to Nezra, where he had been brought up and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as he usually did. He stood up to read, and they handed him a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor to proclaim liberty to captives, and to bind the new sight, to set down the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year of favour. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the assistant, and sat down. All I, and all eyes in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to speak to them. This text is being fulfilled today, even as you listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our readings today are full of many inspiring words and thoughts to think about. The Gospel reading could you imagine if someone came into your church one Sunday morning and said to the people, especially, say for instance, as happened here, the Spirit of the Lord has given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor and to proclaim liberty to captives, to buy a new sight, to set, down, to set the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year of favour. The person sits down and said, This text is being fulfilled today, even as you listen. What would be your reaction to that? probably exactly the same 
of the people in the synagogue, especially the synagogue where Jesus was brought up, raised. They saw him growing from a little boy into a man. They were probably thought he was crazy. The other readings, of course, too. The readings from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Now you together are Christ's body. Yes, we are. All members of the church, our bodies are, belong to the body of Christ, the body of the church. We have all been given different gifts, different ministries. All are important, like different parts of the body, all are important. If you don't have one part of the body, it makes it very hard. It's like someone who loses a limb, loses an arm. But it's remarkable, isn't it? Say, for instance, a blind person who loses their sight. The other parts of the body come to help. Their sense of hearing is so much more sharp. Sense of smell. So working together in the body of Christ, the church, we all need to support the church with our own talents, with our own gifts. And of course in the first reading, to me the thing that come, stands out the most was for this day is sacred to our Lord. Do not be sad. The joy of the Lord is your stronghold. When we go to church on Sundays, we know that Sunday is a special day for us Christians. We celebrate the resurrection, the new covenant that Jesus has made with us. Not a sad day. It's a joyous day. So let's celebrate. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord uncover his face to you and bring you peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now to love and praise the Lord this glorious Sunday. Amen.